Hi everybody, it's Debbie here. Welcome back to My Crafty Den. I'm glad you could join me today for another episode of my um, DIY Christmas Ornaments series. And I'm just calling it the 12 Days of Christmas Ornaments. So each day I'm bringing to you another homemade ornament that is Pinterest inspired. And today's ornament is going to be, I'm going to try to make a wreath. I got... Just recently, I got a whole bunch of these shower curtain rings. Now, there's usually a dozen shower curtain rings. There's way more than that in here. And I decided that they would make really cute little Christmas tree-sized wreaths. I'm going to try to make a different style today. I have this fabric. And all it actually is, it's an old pair of plaid sleep pants. That's what it is. It's an old pair of sleep pants. And I've been cutting it up because I just love the red and green and blue plaid in it. So I've decided to take a section here. Now I'm trying to get this red plaid part so... I figured I wanted from the white to the white, so I'm cutting actually from the blue stripe to the blue stripe, and I'm making that my guideline, and I'm cutting a nice long piece of this. Now that I've got my strip, and this is, I just eyeballed it, I didn't measure it, but I'm thinking it should be about 15 inches long, 12, oh, so almost 17 inches. I am going to just square up the ends and I'll just square the end up like this because it's pretty rough the other one's not too bad and I'm going to take my fabric glue now I don't mind waiting for things to dry I use hot glue for a lot, a lot of stuff. But this, I want this to stay soft. I want it to stay, I want to be able to gather this. And because of that, I'm going to use the fabric glue because it's a flexible bond. So, and this is the Craft Medley fabric glue. I bought this at a dollar store. Um, and it just says a permanent flexible bond that dries clear all the things that I want. So it's always a struggle to get your glue to the end. So I'm going to just put a little bead of this all the way along that yellow stripe. I love plaids for this reason because when you're working with them, they've got their grid lines already on there. Then I am going to fold this over. I should have done it the other way. So I'm going to very carefully flip it over so that I can take this and I'm going to try to line those up, those yellow lines, so that I get my so that I get my um, tube. I'm making a tube. Yeah. So that I get my tube as even as possible. So I'm just going to do this and it it doesn't take that long to dry. So if I give this about 20 minutes, I'll be able to work with it. It's nice and warm in here, so that should dry in about 20 minutes. But in the meantime, I'm going to go through and I'm going to make two or three more strips. Okay, so I made four strips. These have been sitting for about an hour and I came back to check and I just went like this. I just wanted to pull them like this to see how hard it was to pull them apart. You can't. So this is what I'm doing next. I'm going to take my pencil. I'm going to put just a tiny dab of hot glue on the end of my pencil and I'm going to stick it right there and I'm going to let it cool down for just a minute because I don't oh I don't want it to go right through there 
I'm just going to let that cool down and I'll show you why because I want to turn these back around so that they're right side out and that's fairly hard. So I'm going to pull this fabric, put the pencil on the inside. The hardest thing about making these is turning these back around. So, and then I'm just going to work my fabric down my pencil like this. This pencil has a broken end. That's why I'm using it because I'm not writing all over my desk. <laughs> but it works. The pencil works really good. The longer the better. The longer the better because then you can just shove it right down. So once you get your pencil at the other end, it becomes a little bit easier because you're just going to grab your fabric now and keep pulling it down like this. I have been in here crafting for a while. I have paint stuck to my fingernails. I have glue stuck to my fingers. It's almost time to go out and scrub my hands clean. I keep using the baby wipes, but you don't get them completely clean. I always miss little bits. There, so that's inside out. Then I can just take the, this, the other end of it, pull it back off of there like that. And I have my tube right side out. There, just like that. Now, I'm going to get my shower curtain ring, and I'm going to undo it, and I'm going to feed this all the way around my shower curtain ring, just like this. Like, I love rustic things, and I like this. I like this. Um, rustic print this plaid it's old-fashioned very cool and then click that back into place then you're gonna take a piece of jute twine like about yay long about eight inches maybe eight or nine inches you're gonna cut it in half or not you're gonna cut it in half you're gonna cut it off then you're gonna take this you're gonna tie a knot in the end And I'm going to do that so that my knot is at the bottom and I have this little loop at the top. Then I'm just going to cut these little bits off so they don't stick through. Then I'm going to take my fabric and I'm going to push it together like this. And I'm going to work it around like that. Of the red and the green plaid like this so work it around so that you got because I've got about twice as much fabric or a little more than that even um, on that little wreath then I'm going to go back to my bag of little twine bows that I made and these have lots of little loops on them which is how I like them I'm going to take my hot glue I'm going to put a good sized dollop right there, just like that. And then I am going to stick that right there and let it cool down. And that's all there is to making these. Look at how stinking cute that is. Isn't that adorable? Absolutely. I love anything rustic. I'm going to take that little bit of glue off there now that it's cooled a little bit. Put a little bit of a, a dollop, didn't I? There. So, loving it. Absolutely loving it. Love how these turned out. So, I've got two more to go through. And I'm going to do the same thing with them. So, I'm just putting the last couple together here. And I thought there might have been a few things that I didn't say. Now, one was if you want your bow, or if you want your knot on your hanger to be at the bottom, then you have to put it through first, 
open it up and put the loop in between those two so that that goes to the bottom. And that works good because the knot then is hidden down in this little space between the two, the, um, you know, where the shower curtain hook snaps together. And then you can put this and put bunch it and it goes over top just like that. And the other thing that I wanted to say was when I'm putting my little bow on, I always have a side that I like better than the other because it's plaid and you just, you know, how much of this plaid is going to um, be the same? It's not. Like everyone is a little wee bit different. So I kind of tend to just pick what I think is my good side or the side that I like the best. Um, and I like using the smaller bows. Like when I made this bag of bows, it was, there were smaller ones and there were bigger ones. So I like using the smaller ones. And just a little bit of hot glue there. stick that close to the top and it's your choice whether you want to cut these off or not like on some of these I have left them on and some of them I have cut them off so this one has no bits hanging down but it's a little bit bushier kind of thicker this one I've left them on and I think this one I'll leave them on as well I'm just not going to make them quite as long and that's all there is to them and I'm going to put it on this way. So it's all just a matter of choice. Which way do you want your bow to go? Which way do you want your plaid to go? The hardest thing about making this is deciding, making your decisions. So I glue that right there. And I'm going to cut a little bit off of this. And I'm done. So in the matter of... 15 minutes if you don't count the drying time I've made four of these little wreath ornaments I think they are so super cute and they're just adorable like just adorable now there's the other thing that you can do is see how this one looks a little bit smaller and it's bunched up a little bit more. So I took the glue side where the seam was and put the seam to the middle. And on these ones, the seam is on the outside and that makes them look a little bit bigger because there's not as much bulk in the center. Just makes the center hole a little bit bigger. So that's another choice as well. So like most of these little simple ornament DIYs that I've been doing, so much of it just a sec here. I'm shutting off my glue gun because it's dripping. It's getting too hot. So most of it is just a matter of um, decisions. What fabric are you going to use? Like what ribbon are you going to use? What are you going to use for a tie? So here's some ideas. Imagine these made with um, a fabric that is shiny that has a metallic thread in it and then a, you know a nice satin bow with some bling in the middle and a, a satin ribbon on here um, how adorable they would look they could go on a white Christmas tree and be completely glam completely glam and you could also take these and put a white cotton fabric on here something that's um, old and faded or tea stained on here and then put uh, lace ribbon you know like the crocheted lace ribbon on for a bow as well as a tie and you could make shabby chic the possibilities are endless you could do whatever you wanted so there are my four little Christmas wreath ornaments in the rustic and plaid style that I decided to make I hope you enjoyed this video I am just going to do, I'm just going to grab something here. I'm going to grab 
an old calendar. I've got all these got old calendar pages, and I'm just going to plunk it underneath these so that you can see them a little bit better. And there. Um, sometimes my black craft, my, t my tabletop is black, and sometimes that's not the best thing. So, um, yeah, always keep your calendars. There's always bits and pieces in here that you can use of those pictures. So, <laughs> yeah, I don't throw anything away. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. In the comments below, let me know what you think of these really easy little DIY ornaments. I hope everybody's enjoying this series. If you are not a subscriber already please consider subscribing so that you can see what I've got coming up and by all means if you haven't seen the first few of this series go back and check it out and um, yeah so that's it for now everybody have a wonderful wonderful crafting day and bye bye for now everybody I'll see you in the next one